Welcome back to another DMOS Coding Projects video. Okay, in today's video I'm going to show you how to install JavaFX, set up the environment paths, and also install Scene Builder. Go to Google, type in JavaFX, go to the JavaFX website, scroll down to Downloads, scroll down to where it says Downloads, select the latest version, select your operating system, Windows, Select the architecture of your CPU. There are two downloads that you will need. The first one, SDK, which is used for software development. The second one, JMOD, which is used for the software deployment. Click on SDK to download. Once downloaded, click on the downloaded zip folder. Copy the actual download within the zip. Go to where we installed Java 18 under Program Files, Java, and then paste this into that directory. Click on Continue to allow administrator rights. Once this is copied over, the next thing we'll do is download the JMODS folder. Now go back to the JavaFX download. Now click on the JMODS. Once this is downloaded, click on the zip folder, copy the JMODS folder, go to your Java installation folder, paste this in there, click on continue again, allow administrator rights. Now once we've completed this, we'll go back to our system environment variables, and this time we're going to set up the paths for JMODS and for the SDK. Search for, edit the system environment variables, Click on Environment Variables, then click on New to add a new path. Type in path underscore to underscore fx. Make sure this is in capitals. Then go back to where we copied Java FX SDK, and then copy the location for the lib folder. Go back to the Environment Variables, and insert this in for variable value. Now you want to make sure it includes the double quotes. Click OK. Now we need to set up the path for the JavaFX JMODs. Click on New again. Insert path underscore to underscore FX underscore JMOD. Go back to where we copied the JavaFX. Go back to JavaFX JMODs. Copy this path. Go back to the environment variables. And then paste this in for the variable value. Once again, making sure it's got the inverted commas. Click OK, OK again, and then OK again. Now we want to install Scene Builder. Go up to Google search, type in Scene Builder, go to the Scene Builder website, scroll down to Downloads. You want to download the Scene Builder Windows installer. Make sure it says up here Scene Builder 18. Click on Download. Once this is downloaded, click on the download to install, click on next, click on accept the license agreement, click on next, click on next again to install it to the default directory, then click on install. Now click on finish. Now you'll see a shortcut icon on the desktop. Right click on this icon. Now under Windows 11 you'll need to click on show more options and then left click on pin to taskbar. This will pin it down here on the taskbar, which will make it easier to launch the application in future. Now you've installed Java FX SDK, JMODs, set up all the paths, and you've installed Scene Builder. Now we need to set up the SDK development for Java FX in NetBeans. From the icon at the bottom of the taskbar, load up your NetBeans, go up to the menu where it says Tools, go down to Libraries, now we need to create the library for JavaFX. Select New Library. Under where it says My Library for the library name, type in JavaFX. For the library type, leave it as Class Libraries. Click OK. Now you need to actually add the actual libraries for JavaFX, where we just installed them to. Click on Add Jar Folder and browse to where we downloaded and copied the SDK JavaFX libraries. This was under C Drive, 
program files, Java, Java FX SDK. Select the library folder and then select all the libraries. Click on add jar folder and then click on OK. Now we've set up NetBeans to develop a Java FX project. In the next video I'm going to show you how to use Scene Builder with NetBeans and using Java FX to set up a project. This will involve setting up a project for Java FX, which will be done under the properties. We'll set up the Java FX library module path and all the class paths. And we'll also set up the runtime so you can run a project. Here's a sample of the next project that we're going to create. This project will involve a text field input. In this text field window, you can only enter in numeric numbers. This text field input though will also be a little bit more advanced. It'll also implement full validation on the text field, meaning the extra code that I'll show you to create will only allow the user to enter in a numeric number. If they try to enter in a letter, it'll display a label with an error message. It'll also implement a fixed field length. So if they entered in a number, it'll only allow a certain amount of digits to be entered. I look forward to showing you the project in the next video.